Uncle Jungle, what's a Mopar?
Hi, good morning. Welcome to beautiful Middlesex Fells Reservation in Stoneham in Medford, Massachusetts. I'm Ed Hennessy and I thought I'd show you my uh, my two Mopars today. And thanks to my good friend Mike Holmes, who is now in my trunk, helping <laughs> bring us the tape today. So we'll we'll go ahead. We've got uh, we got my 87 LeBaron right here that uh, you're seeing well from the inside anyway. And uh, we'll come by with my 78 Valari in a little bit. So if you'll stand by one second, we'll let Mike out of the trunk and we'll go ahead and show you the two cars. This is from my 1987 Chrysler LeBaron K body. It's uh, nothing fancy, just my everyday driver. Ice blue is an 87, as I said, and uh, out in about uh, two and a half years now. So. But, Non-standard wheel covers. I don't know where the wire wheels went. They were missing when I got the car, so I went out and got a set of earlier LeBaron hubcaps. And uh, the basic 2.5 liter, normally aspirated engine. One of these days, who knows where the uh, turbo in there, but for the time being, uh, that's what it's got. We have 96,000 miles on it. Needs a little cleaning, I suppose, but uh, gets me around pretty well. And. Uh, I'm sure all of you have seen this before. Full gauges, as I said, 96,000 and change. So I got one non-standard edition, my uh, amateur radio two meter transmitter receiver. There where the ashtray used to be, but other than that, it's pretty much uh, as it came out of the factory. Back in a different corner of the Middlesex Fells, and we've gone and changed cars. Me being Mike, our lovely cameraman, and I. And lovely. I've pride and joy. Pride and joy. My 1978 Plymouth Valari, two doors. Been in the family since the car was brand new. Uh, a couple of minor flaws, like the grill. Uh, for some reason, those grills are made out of very weak plastic, and even though there's a little hole in this one, it seems to have more grill intact than most of them I've seen. So I'm looking for a new grill for this one, one of these days. But other than that, it's in reasonably good shape. It's been, it's been repainted, uh, and some of the rust work has been done. But other than that, it's pretty much intact. It's been in the family since day one. We've got uh, some pictures of the, the car when uh, it was done, when it was redone, and I've also got the window sticker since it was, it was uh, purchased back on July 14th, 1978. Non-standard wheel covers. I've got the other ones at home. These came off the shadow. Uh, the other ones need some some redoing, and I'd rather not have them get completely worn out from the, the weather before I have them fixed. The black paint is getting all painted on them. Okay. I'll show you That's your basic trunk here. Your basic stripped-down model of a of an F body, two door. Has a very thin felt mat on the bottom, no carpeting, no sound deadening, no nothing. But other than some kind of a bare bones car, I've got uh, this is bill of sale. It's not very big. I've got actually not the bill of sale, but the window sticker. I've got two of them actually. One was actually stuck to the window, and because it was a sales bank car, I've got the other one that was given to the dealer. And uh, you can see a two barrel car radio cigarette lighter, vinyl side molding, power steering, and wheel covers, and that about does it. And not much in it. I've replaced the AM radio with an AM FM, but, uh, but there it is, 4462 plus destination charge of $240. Boy, those days are long gone. But there you go. Mike, if you come on over here, we'll show, show folks the engine. It's your basic uh, Slant 6, Super 6. It's got two barrel carburetor. And uh, not a whole heck of a lot else besides power steering. It's got power steering over here, and uh, that's about it. No air conditioning, no, uh, no nothing. It does have the torque flight automatic. It's got a seven and a quarter rear end and uh, 294 rear gears. But other than that, it's your basic uh, six cylinder F body. And uh, we'll start it up for you. Oh, and there, by the way, that's the fender tag there. You can see that that, that also has very little information on it, given that it's a rather bare bones car. Got 
got the very familiar kick of a slant six. 133,000 and change on it, but uh, every time I do a tune up on it, always has a spark plug, or six spark plugs actually, that come out very clean and looking exactly like a spark plug that you used to. And so I can't really complain. No carbon, no oil falling, no nothing. Uh, you probably didn't hear much for fan noise, but that's that's what it is. Basic, uh, basic fine trick. And, uh, really good running car. Is the standard two door F body interior. It's got this really funky sort of jacquard paisley sort of pattern to it, but that's what came standard in all the two doors, and we got. A little bit of fade there in the rear shelf and on the side panels, but red does that, so one of these days I'll get some vinyl dye and take care of it. But considering that myself and my sister were growing up while my parents owned the car, uh, the seats have been in pretty good shape all these years since 78 because my mother always kept seat covers on it, so I've been lucky. It's a little tear here in the front seat, but I'm working on trying to do something about that. But other than that, it's in pretty good shape for a car of its age that's been used pretty much as a regular commuter car for the first half or more of its life. enjoyed our look at uh, my two Mopars, thanks to Mike Holmes, my friend. You might want to check Alt Callahan's news group. He hangs out there quite a bit. And uh, hope it wasn't too boring. I know I don't have a roadrunner or anything that can spin rubber really badly. But I uh, thought it would be nice if we get together. Anybody in Greater Boston, either permanently or visiting, I would love to get together with any uh, MML members. Please feel free to drop me a note. We'll hook up and get together. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoy the rest of the tape. And uh, see you later. Then uh, a regular racer on the other side. Who's that? Rick Ross, right? Could be Richard. Hi, this is Richard Myers, but that wasn't me in that car. This is me here in this blue Belvedere. No, wait a minute, that's not me either. The racing was uh, English Town this last June. This is New York, and these are my cars. This is a Mopar song in progress. This is my apartment in Manhattan. It's a, this is actually an interesting building. There's a lot of writers that live here. Uh, like who? Allen Ginsberg lives downstairs. That's the only one that's probably really well known. He drives a Hemikuda. <laughs> <laughs> the back, back in my living room. Look, my Don Garland's autograph. 
dome light lens. And here coming up is m back there in the, is my pal Curtis, who who with his friend Terry is responsible for shooting this. He runs the Hillbilly Pecker Barbecue TV Hour in Manhattan in the tenements. The bathtub is in the kitchen, and in this this one, the car parts are underneath the bathtub. There's a three, 340 high performance exhaust manifold, 318 heads, 383 passenger side exhaust manifold. Yeah, so yeah, this is this this little. Little uh, humble cubicle here. It's where I communicate with all the <coughs> you gents. See down there is the 66 Plymouth Owner's Manual. Right next to my novel, they kind of they kind of sleep together. Now let me show you what's uh, under the hood of this satellite here. It's a uh, 318 that's bored over 30 with 340 heads. The later ones with the smaller valve valves. It's got about a 340 size cam in it. Um, it's got a lot of power, especially uh, with the help of this this goody under the funky air cleaner here. It's a Holly projection electronic fuel injection unit that I love. Um, great power and really delicate tuning available from a little electronic box inside the passenger compartment with knobs on it you know, replacing all the carb tuning you'd have to do. Little knobs you turn for um, idle, mid-range, power, acceleration. Um, and I'm real pleased with it. You know, I, I'd actually, I bet this car has up near 300 net horsepower, which is not as much as a lot of you guys and girls, but it's really fun in this car. It's, it's got uh, 323 sure grip and back, um, and so does the Barracuda. Uh, and the Barracuda is on an eight and three fourths axle as well that Bill Hay put in. Um, underneath that, that pretty air cleaner there on that um, Barracuda, the fresh new air cleaner I just put in is the mystery engine. <laughs> it's a new car, um, and we don't really know what cam is in it. It's been recently rebuilt, but we weren't able to to reach the guy responsible for it and don't even don't know what kind of bore it has it's uh, uh, it's plenty of fun to drive though it's peppy um, but you know what my fantasy is to take the engine out of the satellite put it in the Barracuda and drop a 360 Magnum crate engine in the satellite that's the uh, that's that's the next stage. Bill Hay did a lot of work on the, on the Barracuda. He not only put on the four barrel intake and carb, he oversaw the upholstery, not doing that himself, but he put in the carpet and the headliner, um, the radio, <laughs> all kinds of trim and odds and ends that he took care of. Sort of just basically um, slapped the car into shape. Get that stinking sneaky beamer out of there. Um, that upholstery doesn't quite perfectly match the the door panels, but I'm going to dime till the to, uh, to make them match. Uh, and I want to show you what the satellite sounds like. Oh yeah, I don't think I even said the Barracuda is a 273, and both the cars are automatics. You're actually twice the size of the Empire State Building. Excellent. You're one big bear. <laughs> That's Terry. That's Terry. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Curtis and Terry. 
Mo Partia. We're going to go out with a few bars of another new song behind some footage of some show cars at English Town this summer. Good night, you all. Car and a beautiful girl. A sight this fellow finds absolutely irresistible. This is Joey Newhouse speaking, the car you'll meet in a moment. But I'd like the Mopar mailing list to meet Carla Mashbaum, my partner in automotive mechanics. Carla and I rebuilt the carburetor on this car. In fact, she's reading up on it right now. You can see the picture in the book, shop manual. I've mentioned Carla a number of times in my post to the list, so I thought it would be nice for you all to meet her in person. Hello, I'm Joey Newhouse, and this is Goldilocks, our 1974 Dodge Star. We are the original owners of the car, and the car has served us very well in uh, the 21 years that we've had her. Uh, the body of the car is in fairly good condition, especially on the left side, where this is the side which usually gets the sun, so there's virtually no rust. There's a little bit around the rear wheel well, where um, I've tried to treat it, paint it over, but um, the car has never been in an accident. Not one. On the trunk here, you can see the uh, decal from Metro Dodge, which is where my parents bought the car, special ordered it. That dealership is no longer in, in existence, so that's kind of a historic, um, historic label. Now, the right side of the car is not in quite as good condition, partly because the car is parked like this most of the Time. And so there's a lot of moisture in the grass that's causing the rear quarter panel to rust. Um, one of these days I do hope to uh, take care of that rust, but I just haven't had the time so far. Taking a look under the hood, we see a typical slant six engine, I suppose. Um, the uh, car is fairly clean. We had the engine steam clean not long ago. And of course, I do want to show all of you the carburetor we rebuilt. She mostly rebuilt. Um, in all of its pristine glory. We'll see in a moment if it still works. Uh, let me put this back together again. That goes on there. The car has approximately 125,000 miles on it. The engine's never been rebuilt. Uh, and I'm slowly learning how to do more and more of my own work on the car. Helped in part by the wisdom of the Mopar mailing list. Now, proceeding around to the interior of the car, we'll start off in the back seat. The interior is really quite well preserved. Uh, I spent a lot of time back here in my younger days. 
uh, cloth and vinyl seats. Fairly comfortable and uh, good room. Now, proceeding around to the front, you all can see the item that is, makes this car very unusual. Front bench seat, but we have a three-speed manual transmission on the floor. First, second, and third. My parents wanted manual transmission, and this was the only way the car would come with air conditioning. So, well, the car's been sitting a few days. Let's see if uh, Carla's carburetor still works. Oh. Apparently, we had some technical difficulties with the uh, noise of the engine overwhelming me. But, uh, I was going to say that we're in Bethesda, Maryland, just inside the Capitol Beltway, and I'd like to take you all on a uh, brief tour of some of the sites in Washington, D.C. Shall we go? The Washington skyline, you can see the Lincoln Memorial, Washington Monument, and the Capitol Dome. And down there is Goldilocks. And Carla doesn't know she's being taped right now, but that's all right. So let's take a look at some of the monuments, shall we? At the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, where you can make lots of money. So here we are, the Washington Monument. The Jefferson Memorial. And here the car is in front of one of the most disliked buildings, perhaps, in America. You can see very faintly what the title of it is, Internal Revenue Service. Well, here we are at the U.S. Capitol behind us. We thought it was a fitting way to end our tour of Washington. So, farewell to the no car mailing list. See you in 1996.
are gone, I might as well get me a new. Get me an ass. Get that gasoline. Hey, hope you enjoyed the fleet, and I'll see you guys and folks on the list.
front electrical harness. Takes care of the headlights and everything. All right, let's see what we got. Not bad. The whole reason for having this puppy is I need I need that. I need disc brakes. I need the big block K member here, and I need them torsion bars for the big engine I'm gonna put in. And of course, this thing is thrashed on the current car. It says that in her fender where it got wrecked, so I gotta change that too. Oh, let's see. This all the shit that fell out of that fender when it was opened up. What a mess. And I'm trying to take all this junk, except for the leaf springs, down to the deal tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get something for it. From out of here. I already have the center console. And we don't need a glove box. But this is interesting. Map light. I'll have to find a place for that. Right next to the ashtray. Right next to the speaker switch right there. For the rear, I won't need that. And really, that just about does it. Hmm, what a mess. And the gas tank. And bad shape. Yeah? Um, just on what did you think I was doing? Mm -hmm. I just want to get a look at the destruction. Not you, honey. Okay. Uh, film that with a disco ring in the background, right? Hey, yeah, it sounds good. That's not disco. <laughs> That's retro 70s action, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'm too busy taking pictures of my junk here. Okay, Billy. Yeah, let's see what you're doing, man. He's getting dirty. Yeah. There's nothing professional at work. <laughs> Show me one. <laughs> Where's the air match? <laughs> That's one. Sometimes I wish I had a little compressor. That'd make life a lot easier. Well, one less challenger in the world, man. Makes all the others more valuable. Oh, yeah, that looks beautiful. It's what we call Bill's T top service. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. We'll work on the other side now. Yeah. <laughs> Impress me. <laughs>
thing cuts down rather quickly. Yeah. No, it ain't mine either. Smile, man. Oh, cool. A convert. This is Trevor Rogers uh, up in Nova Scotia. Uh, this, uh, my brother and I are going to show you a, a couple of uh, uh, segments uh, on our uh, Mopar collection. Uh, what we have here is, is my car, the 73 Plymouth Duster. Uh, it started out life as a Plan 6 grocery getter, but I did a little work to it to make it a little more exciting. 364 speed car now. I uh, just uh, finished a motor job uh, when I, and I put a few goodies in the end. It's a 360 block with uh, stock pistons. I use seal power rings and bearings. A 284 degree duration cam. We've got headers, uh, 30, 40 high rise intake, and uh, a thermoquad on to top it all off. Orange box ignition. It's a 14 second car, it works pretty good. Um, it's GLH Turbo. Um, it's pretty much, well, it's entirely bone stock. Uh, we just got it uh, a short time ago. We haven't had a chance to really do any modifications to it, but other than a, uh, a body job, uh, I'm looking at tuning up the motor a little bit. It's, uh, it's in fair condition. It's got some rust rot, but the price was right and the engine's good. It's got low miles and it's very fast. Hiya. Greg Hamilton from Amherst, Nova Scotia. This is my old beast sitting in the Rogers Brothers yard right now for stripping. We got the motor out of it a couple of weekends ago and it's going in my next project car, which is a, a 1980 Chrysler Cordova. It's interesting, I've seen some stuff on the list this last week. This is October 22nd. A boat dropped the 360s in the Chrysler Cordova. This is a and the 80 body stock. And, uh, I think it should work pretty good because it used to haul this thing around pretty good. We had a 360 uh, core barrel, modified, a few little tricks and odds and ends done to it. And uh, it actually was a three and a quarter horse, and I discovered that when you put three and a quarter horse in a 15 year old car with kind of a soft frame, it rips them in half. <laughs> so that's why I could have given up on this. Uh, it was a 79 original RT. It's kind of a shame it wasn't in a little better shape because they are a little bit hard to come by. But, uh, We'll strip it for all the goodies anyway. And I, don't know, I guess that's what all I have to say.
Uh, what you just saw was my 1972 Dodge half-ton. Uh, it's uh, had a pretty hard life, as you can probably imagine. Um, it's got a 364 barrel uh, police car motor, 727 automatic transmission, and uh, it works good. It's not much to look at, but uh, it's always always starts. It's good and reliable, and it puts up with uh, probably more than the average amount of abuse. And that's her. Plowman. I've um, been an MML member for about two years now, and I got about 10 minutes before I have to be at work, and this is supposed to be the last sunny day we're going to get, so I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick little tour here. I can go ahead and get the GTX a little later today because it's up in a lighted garage. So let's start off here first. This is my uh, 1952 Plymouth Cambridge. I got this this summer from my great uh, grandmother. The uh, car's been sitting for about 11 years and uh, we got it started and running this summer but uh, the brakes are shot all the seals are dried out and the pedal just goes right to the floor um, it's got 21,000 miles on the clock it's got the straight flathead six in it three speed on the column and uh, it's got some pretty tall gears in the back here's a shot right here of the motor as you can see it's pretty simple straightforward stuff. This is the inside of it. Uh, it's been repainted once by my uh, one of my uncles about 13 years ago. Paint's still holding up fine. Uh, the paint is was originally green. This shade of green is real close. Uh, the original shade of green is like a an army green almost. Darts. This is a 70 Dodge Dart. It's got a 318 in it, automatic, factory air, power steering, and power brakes. Uh, I bought the car about three years ago, four years ago now, for $200, and. Uh, the fellow went ahead and told me that it just stopped running. And uh, of course, I went up there and fiddle farted with it for a little bit. And uh, it turned out that it just needed a timing chain. So uh, I put a timing chain gears and a water pump on it, drove it home. Since then, I've put a uh, tune up kit on it and a uh, carburetor rebuild, a radiator. And I had to put a fuel tank in it because the other one rusted out. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, I got this set of rallies here for it, and uh, I got one of the sport hoods on the front, which is a real hood off a 340 car. Um, I got them garbage tires up on the front because the front end is still a little worn out, and I don't want to cut up my new tires. Uh, and as you can see, that one's just sort of developed a flat. I lose a piece of it just about everywhere I go. Uh, car's pretty straight. The interior's real nice. Let's go ahead and there you go. That's a three eighteen for you.
I got a new dash pad for it. Uh, all the door panels and whatnot in this car are just absolutely perfect. Uh, no tears in them, no brakes in them or anything like that. The front seat's only busted up where you sit down on it. The backs are fine, and the backs and the back seats are fine. Uh, like I said, it's a 1970, just like the one behind me here. It's got a slant six in it. Uh, it's got about uh, 180,000 miles on the body. The engine was rebuilt about 60,000 miles ago. It's got the uh, 904 trans and the little light duty rear. Um, it was originally factory yellow. My mom bought the car in 1971. Uh, for her daily driver, and uh, she bought it used for $1,300. It's donated to me when I got uh, to be the age of 16, and I've had it ever since. Oh, well, haven't seen before, I'm sure. There's a slant six for you. It has air conditioning in the car. The power brakes uh, aren't on this car. And it's got power steering. The air conditioning is uh, Chrysler Air Temp Add-on Air. It was added on by the dealer. It wasn't installed factory. I'm still working the bugs out of it. But seeing how it's about 14 degrees out here right now, I don't think I'm going to need it for a little while. As you can see, Nothing to it. Not much else to show you, folks. You've seen everything. There's a little clip of the Buick there. That's one of my other rides. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my keys out of the garage here. And uh, I'll take you up a little bit later today, and we'll go ahead and see the GTX. Here we go. Here's the uh, 68 Plymouth GTX. It's uh, been in the family for about five years now, and uh, I bought it, put 12 miles on it, took the thing all the way apart. Been working on it ever since. Uh, it's painted uh, UU1, which is frost blue metallic. Uh, it's a really neat color. Uh, it's very close to B5 blue. This has the uh, original 440 engine in it, numbers matching engine, transmission. Uh, it's got the same rear in it. Uh, the build dates match on that. It's got 61,000 miles on the clock. The engine's been out of the car once. The fellow who had the car before me put a uh, purple shaft cam in it, hemi grind, I believe. Polished the crank, put new rings in it. car here when I got it had a rusted out trunk floor it was completely untouched um, except for the drivetrain really just the motor everything else was left alone and primer spots on it and whatnot typical but the trunk floor was rotted out there was a big old hole right there right up where the spare tire mount is and uh, I bought this floor pan it's a two-piece floor pan and went in in two halves split right up the middle and uh, the fellow who did the body work for me used lead to uh, cover all the non-factory seams. And I think he did a real nice job. I'm real happy with it. It's a little dusty in there. I got some compound dust from polishing it. You can see it all in the liner there. Okay, here's take a look up the side of the car here. Here you go. There's a good shot. I'm getting pretty excited about getting this back on the road and playing with it. I had the bottom of this car detailed. It was sandblasted on a body dolly. Let me go ahead and bend down here, take a look. I know the springs on the axle are supposed to be a natural color, but I painted them semi-gloss just to keep them nice and fresh looking. Car was never factory undercoated. Uh, it was a good and a bad thing. It was a good thing because it didn't make for a difficult job to do the bottom side of the car. 
But then again, this car was a very low mileage piece, so it didn't get a lot of rust under there either. I didn't have to replace any floor pans in this car, just the trunk. I did put the 3M undercoating in just the wheel wells on the car. Okay. All the new chrome, door handles, some of that stuff is year one stuff. Here's the interior, 150 mile an hour speedometer, no tack, although I might put one in there. Center console, bucket seat car, decent door panels, still putting it together. As you can see, there's the original floor, no rust in there. I put a little bit of that poor 20 stuff on some of the surface discoloration, but uh, it's real nice. It's my little $150 bullet turn indicators. Those have to go on with the fenders off the car. I couldn't believe it when I found that out, but it's the way these particular ones are on there. There's the 440. The engine block and heads and everything was painted orange when I got it. I put it back to the correct turquoise flavor. Those are just some temporary valve covers I have put on there uh, for dry firing this thing and priming it and getting it started. The other ones are being chrome plated right now, the factory original ones. One down here, the other side of the car. Here's the factory H pipe in the corner there. I covered it with uh, Eastwood stainless steel coating. Here's a better shot. Here's the tailpipes. That's what they look like. They're the original tailpipes. I couldn't believe none of that stuff was rusted out. But uh, it's pretty good shape there. We go. Here we go. Here's uh, some finished panels. I've been picking these up at Carlisle and whatnot, spare parts. I'm sure Hemi can appreciate having an extra one of these around. They are uh, real tough to detail and get clean looking. Full of that argent silver. The uh, red that's in the middle of them is actually a tape stripe. The edges of the letters are all chromed and then filled in with black. And that's about it. That's the GTX. Anybody got any parts they want to sell? Or any tips on what you see here for me? I'd appreciate it. This is pretty much my first real restoration that I'm doing. And I'm taking my good old sweet time on it. I'd really like to step it up a little bit, but I don't want to rush stuff. Up here under this mess is, uh, Here's the wiring harness, the engine wiring harness. This is what I gotta finish putting together before we can go ahead and get it started. Got some of the, most of the stuff's labeled. I know where it all has to go back. Nothing y'all haven't seen before. And that's about it, that's the show. Y'all have a Merry Christmas. And a safe new year. And I'll see you all on the MML. Take it easy. Welcome to Fort Collins, Colorado. This is Gene's segment of the videotape. And here we are looking at my most recent car addition to my stable. It's my 66 Plymouth Satellite that I picked up at an insurance auction. I've done a little bit of work to it since I picked it up. The uh, biggest thing that you can see is the driver's quarter panel has been replaced. No, actually, it's not done yet. It's just kind of hanging on there, but that's off a of 67 Belvedere. Straightest thing I could find in Colorado. Notice I've got a little rally wheel sitting on there right now.
the previous owners decided that they didn't need to tighten lug nuts and drove the car until that tire came off and it just crumpled up the original quarter panel. Other than that, this car is very straight and I kind of consider myself lucky to have gotten it out of that insurance auction. It's got a Polysphere 318, which I believe is the original engine and it's got a four barrel carburetor and manifold on it that I believe somebody in a uh, previous owner decided to stick on there. I think these were only two barrel cars. They came from the factory with the 318, the old style. Just yesterday I picked up some new turn signal lenses for the grill. They're looking pretty sharp. They're not too bad. They're a lot better than what was in there before, which was basically nothing. Unfortunately, the car has a salvage title, which means that I need to get a police, a state police inspection before I can put it on the road again. The interior is in very nice condition. The uh, headliner has been removed, and I'll probably replace that. It was kind of getting dry rotted. I needed to take it out anyway so I could do the work on the quarter panel, and welding and all that without setting it on fire. The seat vinyl, although in very nice condition, is not the original. The original seats should have that scroll pattern that you see on the door there. These are the original door interiors. They're all in really nice condition. And the car's got 90. 7,000 miles on the clock, which I believe is the first trip around, so it's under 100,000 miles. Console, automatic, and somebody's boat steering wheel, that's what I call that, big metal flake pattern. Need to find myself a real Plymouth steering wheel for this thing. Decided he wanted to put some big tires on this thing, he's got 275s on there, and in order to get the 275s to clear, he had to re-radius the fenders. This is really the only body problem left on the car to deal with is to get rid of this huge fender cutout and get it back to what the original is. And basically straight across about level with that trim line. In my driveway, you look in the door of the garage and this is the first thing that greets you during the winter months. Just looking at that, you should be able to tell what this is. That's kind of the way things were. In a second or two, I'll give you a vision of what things will be. There it is. Took us a little bit of doing to get it in, but it fits. Got the tunnel ramp still stuck on there. Hopefully I'll be able to find myself a rat roaster manifold so I'll be able to keep my six pack scoop sitting up on top of the hood there. If not, I've got my standby box scoop hood that I can put on here and run with the tunnel ram. So you can see the clearance between the rocker cover and the master cylinder. It's pretty tight. As is the clearance between the drive shaft and the head. Still haven't gotten the drive shaft or the uh, excuse me steering shaft in place. And we'll get that buckled up before race season. Other side, kind of give you a clue of how close the fit is in here. There's about an eighth of an inch clearance between the head and the shock tower. Mount with solid motor mounts. An eighth of an inch is all you need. engines legacy there. Let's see if we can focus in on that. There we go. Welcome to Roosevelt National Forest in northern central Colorado. This is about 30 minutes west of where I live and this is the last segment of my videotape. And I figured that uh, the best way to show off my ram charger other than plowing snow, which we haven't had, or towing a trailer, would be up here in the mountains on some 4x4 trails. Let's give you a quick view of what it looks like where we are right now. 
elevation here is probably just a bit over 7,000 feet. And parts of the trail that I'm on probably get up to about nine or 10,000 feet. This is pretty much the way we're gonna head. And I'll be jumping down the truck every now and then just to kind of show you what things look like. Now, contrary to popular opinion, this is what four-wheel drive is. A trail about six inches wider than your truck, about 30 degrees slope, and about two and a half miles an hour. You go much faster than this and you'll be walking home. here most of the roads around here that are now four by four trails are uh, combination logging roads up here in the national forest a little bit of logging is allowed to help thin the forest out and also a little bit of uh, geologic survey stuff since this is public land a lot of times they'll allow uh, prospectors to come up here and stake claims for mineral rights. This trail here has gotten itself pretty rough from use. And I think uh, this little washboard section here, I'm going to have to put the camera down. No, maybe not. Let's see what happens. Looks like it's time for some four-wheel drive. I don't think we've kitty cornered our wheels. That means we got the left front in the air and the right rear in the air. And that means no go without a short grip. Let's try a different attack. There we go. two weeks or so since we've had snow. But we got a little bit of snow here on the trail, as you can see. Probably getting close to about 8,000 feet high now. If it gets much worse than this, I'm gonna have to turn it back and bring chains with me. Nineteen eighty six dot Ram Charger. 364 speed, four wheel drive. Lots of hardware on the front. We got the snow, the snow plow hitch. We got the bumper. There's the worst enemy for a four by four. It's low ground clearance. There's about 10 inches between the ground and the plow hitch there it would be about 20 inches without that right up to the bumper which would make it a lot easier to get over some of the steep terrain with that thing in place you just gonna have to keep your eyes open for the best pass through through the terrain i'm really impressed with how well it did today the only other vehicle i've seen up here today was a jeep and he had some 36 inch by 12 tires on here when he saw me up he the only way to get up here is past one real nasty rocky area 
he was pretty impressed. Seats, the console, power windows, air conditioning, cruise control. In all, it's a little bit nicer truck than my Ford Bronco was. It's comfortable. Runs on the highway real nice. And after finding out today, it looks like four-wheel drive is real good too. End of it. Under the hood, there's the famous old Flathead 6. If you sit down on the, this engine and the 1924 original Chrysler 6 next to each other, they're close enough that you'll be able to tell that they're related. When Walter Chrysler said way back then, hey, let's build a 6, he did it good. You'll notice that the uh, instrument panel is elegant and simple. Everything is there that you need. You take out four screws, and the whole thing comes out if you need to repair it. Unfortunately, they build it so well that you don't hardly ever have to do that. In the middle there, again with four screws, is the uh, infamous Christine radio. We call it that because all you can get on it is oldie stations. Now, everybody knows about having tailgate parties when you go to the ball game. But if it's raining, the trunk on these old cars is big enough to have the party inside. In fact, if you get thrown out for the night, you can even sleep in here. Of course, you have to have a string if you're going to go way back in there looking for something because you might get lost and not be able to find your way back out. So, that for a couple of years now, I've been promising you a ride. So let's go. Here we go. Hold on to your hat. You don't have a hat on. They're quieter than in some cars that you see. It's even the multi-thousand dollar supposedly uh, luxury cars. And there's our house. One of the nice things about this street is you get to show off just how nice this old beast rides. You wouldn't want to do this in the Jeep and try to make a movie in it.
much about the newest song that this radio gets for some reason. beat just about everybody to the uh, call of shift with this what they call the selector type transmission notice how it shifts straight up the second straight down to third this is about the nicest operating transmission ever built I told you, this is a three Mopar family. We have a 1969 pickup truck, which is right there. Hi, Ed. Hi. Here's his Plymouth. And behind it over here, we have the Jeep. We have a flathead slant six and V6. Straight six, excuse me. No V6s in this family. Sorry about that. And there's our little Wrangler Jeep. Okay, now we're going to go back to Ed. That when they were designing the uh, new 1960 models, they had one group working on the styling for the new economy volumes. Another group over in some other building was working on the run and gear and chassis. And another group somewhere else was working on the engine. And when they started putting it all together, they noticed a problem. The uh, styling group says, well, we thought you were going to use the small flathead six that is put in all the import cars. And the engine people said, no, we wanted something new and modern, so we made an overhead valve six. And well, the problem was the engine was too tall, they couldn't close the hood. So one of the older engineers that had been developing the, uh, some of the updates on the flatheads and he was very much involved with designing the Hemi and the Poly and the new wedge engines that were due to come out. Simply walked up, leaned over and says, now I know that a Mopar engine will do anything you ask. And well, 
I need to close this hood. Could you duck a little bit? And from that day forward, the new overhead valve engine can be seen leaning over to one side so you can close the hood. How? Watch out. So it wouldn't be complete if we didn't show off the other inline six that Chrysler makes. Well, this one doesn't lean over. It likes to stand up straight and tall and proud because of its military heritage. Because after all, the grandfather of this engine powered the Jeep that won the war. And well, I guess that's about it. So, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, that's all. Uh, we're doing a video for Mopar mailing list. And let me tell you what happened since you were gone. We had a storm. Some of you might remember, you know, I got really devastated in the storm. Yeah, you could say. I had two buildings out here. One ended up over there and one ended up right here. I got a new barn, and you see the horse. Yeah, she really liked that new barn. And uh, so that's nice because it's bigger and stronger than the old barn. And I only wish I could have made it twice as big, and I'd put some cars in the back half. But we didn't do that. So uh, those of you longtime uh, OMML members know that I used to have a Dodge van, and uh, I used to go down and embarrass people with it at drag strip because I put the computer in it. And it would do like 17 second quarter miles, which was nothing to shout about. But, you know, for a big heavy van, it wasn't bad. People were surprised. And uh, that's gone. We sold that. And we picked up this Dodge Cummings Diesel. It's a 1993 model. And four wheel drive because we thought we were going to go to Denver. Some of you also might have followed that thread. Well, that's not going to happen. I'm going to be here for at least another tornado season or two. So now we've got this four wheel drive big old truck. And I tell you, it's great to have all that power. Get about 20 miles a gallon, and uh, diesel fuel around here. Truck stop, dollar four cents at the uh, you know any kind of um, gas station, dollar eleven to dollar fourteen. So that's pretty good. And uh, bunch of, do you see my shirt? Here? Okay. This is a Mopar mailing list wear. MML wear, we call it for short. You can get it from uh, Jungle George. He's going to have something on this video, too, about it, I think. And uh, I was in Louisiana last week and wore my hat full time. And nobody came up to me and said, hey, what's the MML? So everybody must know who we are. Yeah? But it looks like now. We spent about two weeks or more working on this thing in the evening. And uh, it wasn't any really big problem. It's a tilt front end. And uh, they do that. You have glasses and rods and you know, both tilt right. But the biggest problem is right here. See, this, is, uh, this is nice and flat now. And when I ordered it, I didn't say anything about a flat hood. So I got a regular hood. And I didn't want these bumps underneath the hood. They look stupid. So we uh, <laughs> drilled some holes in it and cut the saw out, cut it out, threw it away. Now uh, we got a nice flat hood. And uh, air should really get sucked in here. I, I was telling people on that thing, they'll catch small birds. They'll catch medium sized birds, as a matter of fact. So I uh, hope there's anything flying around when I'm riding the car. <laughs> but, uh, but it's on, it tilts really well goes back and forth, and we still have to you know, smooth out the scoop and blend everything in, but that was a lot of work. I never thought that I'd take this expensive piece of front end and cut a huge hole in it, but I did it, and it came out really good. I never know after I paint it that it looks so bad right now. <laughs>
of September. This is for the Mopar video, and uh, it's that 67 Barracuda that I just, about this time last year, barely got home. This has got the 400 sitting in it now that I got from Thunderstruck down there in Austin. And uh, that was a part of the project for last month. This month's project's over there. We're going to craft in the hood scoop and take off the power bulges on that one-piece fiberglass front end. And then uh, October, cut out the old roll cage, put in a 12-point, cut out these uh, fender tubs, and uh, so the fender exiters will get in there, take out the shock towers. In other words, only going to be sticking out the front, will be the subframes in the motor. So I guess that's about all I got to give you all for an update on this this year. It's been a while, I haven't sent this thing in the mail. So I thought I'd get a little bit more footage of what more I did to the race car. <laughs> I, uh, I got a metal cutting blade from a skill saw and another one from a little four inch grinder and went to work on the front end. But if you love, if you love stock 6-7 Barracudas, don't look because this one's got some parts missing. Alright, okay, here it is. Got the inner wheel tubs out. I put a 440 in A body a few years ago. And it was horrible trying to change spark plug. And I uh, used fender eggs ahead of so I got big holes in the fender wheels anyhow. You know, they're ruined anyhow, so I took the whole things off. And next week or so, I'm going to take it in and have a 12-point cage welded into it. Then that will give it the rigidity it needs. And then the drive train will go back in. And hey, next year, you'll be able to see this thing in action, stomping on uh, General Motors and Ford stuff, you know. Uh, but anyhow, I just wanted to add this on to the end. Hope you enjoyed my video, and I'll talk to you again next year. Hey, Jim, see you later. Mexico. I'd like to take just a few minutes now to introduce my family and some of my vehicles. Meet my wife, Heather. Hi, everybody. Heather's a grad student in the department, and she's also a soccer referee. And she's also my source of funding for my projects. <laughs> Second, Hiding behind the camera is my son, Joel. Where did he come down there? Joel's 11 years old, and he's in the sixth grade. He's also taking some seventh grade classes. He plays soccer, he plays baseball, he plays clarinet. He's a brown belt in Sanjuri Jiu-Jitsu. Now go get back to work. Now I've got a little bit of footage I'd like to show you. This is from the 1994 College Heights Kindergarten Circus. My daughter is a ringmaster. So take a look. Becca's eight years old, and she's in the second grade. It was almost two years ago that I posted to the list that we were starting what we thought was going to be a four-month procedure to lengthen her left leg. She's now had surgery on the leg five times. She's worn two external fixators with as many as nine pins and wires going into her bone. The leg has either broken or been broken six times. She's worn six casts on it. But it's been six months since she last broke the leg, and so we're hoping we've turned a corner on it. The response I got from people on the list has been wonderful. I now have a saved file of email messages that's over 80 pages long when I print it off. The prayers and the gifts people have sent her have all been just terrific. Thanks, everybody. Last, I'd like you to meet the furry member of the family. Branding's my paper girl and hunting partner. Thanks, girl. Go see mommy. I actually had some fairly grandiose plans for this video entry, but they all required my charger to be running by now. I didn't make it. See, there's nothing attached to the car forward of the firewall at this point. I've got all the undercoating off of the outer fender wells. I'm still working on cleaning out the inside of the engine compartment. Unfortunately, I sort of run out of time for getting things painted this year. So my engine is due to come back from the machine shop next week, and I'll spend the winter working on that. Okay?
Worked too much of my time this year was building the sandblasting cabinet. Opens. There's a wire mirror screen inside. You can put the piece you worked on. Sandblasting gun inside. Gauntlets to protect the hands. And the bottom will easily hold over 50 pounds of sand. Unfortunately, a one and a half horsepower air compressor can't drive it. Show you my other vehicles. First, this is a 1987 Chrysler LeBaron. I mentioned before that I'm an emeritus member of the At the Mercy of the Body Shop Club. What you see here is what happens when your base coat and your clear coat are not compatible. The body shop has since gone out of business. Like many of our members, I also have a vehicle that's not a Mopar. In my defense, I'll say that when we bought it, you couldn't buy a four-wheel drive, manual transmission, extended cab Dakota. In the truck's defense, I'll say, I've never yet taken it anywhere that it hasn't gotten me home from. I'd like to show you one of the things I like about Mopars. Take a look at the oil filter. It's right out in the open, easy to get at. I'd like to show you the oil filter on my truck, but I really can't. It takes three extensions and a universal joint on my ratchet to get down there. That's become my standard of unreasonable maintenance on a vehicle, whether or not you can do an oil change easily. It's been good meeting you all, and I hope to see you all again. Please drop by next time you're in town. Bye-bye. Come on.
110 mile an hour on the freeway. I'm about a Marple Chrysler tires on it. Yeah. Exactly what you get. 110, Christine. 110. You're trying to kill us? Up the hill. <laughs> no, you got. You can't forget to mention that it was up the hill. You use that videotape to sue you. Some, uh, something going before the rain. I don't see at least one in Japan or something. Mary has spoken. <laughs> Take a look at how they got this thing set in the truck. You see the car? What's that? Hey, George.
members once again. the event. If you listen closely, you can hear the rain, and you can see the rain. It is really coming down. slip from the very last running of the... Did you the, get it? Yep, I got it. You got it? Yep, the unnamed... What's the speed on that, 150? 150.5? Yep, RT. George's best 60 foot 10. We don't have an umbrella, do we? So cool. <laughs> Thank you. 
that one right now. I think that's what I have. Okay, next number. One, three, nine. I love Roadrunner. I love Roadrunner. Just like having sex. That's how I see it. Just like having sex. Yeah, even better. Because I tell you this, you spend money on women too. So this is my woman right here too, and I'm married. I just bought it about like a month ago. Total wreck. I had my Chevy. Stop working on a Chevy. I love mo cars, and here I am. This that easy. I'm cooling my baby down. It's it's upset. I'm cooling it down. To get right back out there. Mo car for the older guy. That's actually awesome. for the older guy. Chevy is for all group of eight. But Mopar, that's where you gotta be a man to handle these. You gotta be a man to handle. Ain't a man, don't get behind the wheel. That's all I can say.